posing gloves here and today in this digital audio basics video we're going to talk about aliasing what is aliasing well i expect you to know about the night quest theorem the night quest frequency and we're going to talk specifically about what happens when you try to represent something that you only have one sample point for so we know if we sample below the night quest frequency we'll have two sample points for any given for any given frequency and that'll correlate to one outcome and we can therefore extrapolate all our stuff because we're recording amplitude points as we learned in the bit depth video so what about the deal of something when we try to record over half over the Nyquist frequency we only have one value well what happens is because our signal is band limited those values will be reintroduced back into our signal in a very predictable way so we know that if like say we want to record 24 um, kilohertz in our 44.1 system well it's not going to work out for our benefit instead we're going to run into some serious problems and what we need to do is well, what you what you need to do is you need to filter those frequencies out the reason is they will alias back in is in because there's not enough sample points to re-represent it it'll be put back in our signal and those sample points will be much further apart and as a result you'll get a lower tone a tone that did not even closely represent your original tone so let's come over here to this great picture that seems to just make everything easier so here we have a signal it's got enough sample points and as a result it can adequately represent our signal it represents the correct frequency and we can you know get our our stuff from it uh now over here we do not have enough sample they don't show you all the sample points here so but in this system, they do not, they're sampling a frequency that's too high. And as a result, it gets reintroduced in these samples because we only have one sample for that high frequency and it aliases back in and those samples get put in there. And the only possible result for those samples in those positions would represent a frequency like this. Now this, this is not, you'll never see this on an oscilloscope or on a spectrogram because it'll just be shown as a frequency in your spectrum. It's something that you have to know is there. And because this would be, you know, added to this frequency on an oscilloscope and you would see them both. So they've separated this frequency out in the picture to help us understand. So this signal will get lower information will actually come in, lower harmonics. It's kind of ironic. So when our frequencies are above the Nyquist limit and we've allowed them to get back into our signal, they will be interpolated into the only possible outcome they can be. And as a result, you'll get harmonic distortion. This is something that is not desirable. And you generally it, you generally filter these frequencies out after. So I guess we'll talk about uh, anti-aliasing too. So let's talk about anti-aliasing filters real quick. So what happens when you record something? Well, you need to filter out the higher stuff so that you don't get this problem where you have things getting aliased back into your spectrum and what you do is you just put in a filter and this filter just simply removes all that content and as it does that uh, you can sample your signal accurately and you won't get any of this aliasing stuff it's called an anti-aliasing filter it's a pretty simple idea now this is where higher sample rates may make a difference see filters have problems they have all these conditions that they need that need to be met one of them is they don't pass frequencies evenly and as a result you can color your signal meaning you can shift phase or you, you can just cause uh, amplitude problems. You could roll off part of the frequency spectrum. As a result, having a higher sample range, sample rate will allow you to design a filter much simpler that will not affect your signal. So that's one reason why you would record it like 88.2. It's just to give your anti-aliasing filter a break and make it easier in, on, on the system. So the, the trade-off is you need higher data, well, it takes more storage to store your stuff because you have a lot more content. But having that additional frequency range does nothing for you. It just makes it easier to filter out the stuff uh, with your anti-aliasing filters so that things do not alias back in. As a result, also, because you have the, you're have, you able to represent frequencies that high, I guess that's the reason why I didn't really state it at the beginning, but you're able to represent frequencies that are much higher now because you have a much higher sample rate. And so you can filter those out with a gentler slope. So a filter will use a slope per octave. And as it rolls off and attenuates frequencies, it will, it will, ideally, it'll just turn the frequencies down so that they don't do anything if we don't sample them. But sometimes if it has a really steep, steep filter, let me open up an EQ. So I just want this to be clear. So here's a, a, a filter. 
and it's attenuating it's bringing the volume down of everything over here while it's letting everything down here pass it's called a low pass filter which is essentially an anti-aliasing filter the problem with this uh this thing here is we have this thing right here called the transition band what the transition band does is it is the slope so if we have a really steep slope like this we will not only in some cases you'll end up boosting right at one end of the spectrum and that's not desirable but you'll also experience a phase shift like i was talking about earlier and so to uh, to fix this a much gentler slope will allow us to keep our phase shift as not an issue so it becomes much easier to design a filter with those things in mind so that's what the anti-aliasing filter is and that's what aliasing is i hope this made sense and we're going to talk about oversampling and upsampling in the next uh video that or I'm not sure if it's going to be the next one, but we're going to be talking about that because there are uses for that. But they do not aid you in sampling here. I actually might talk about DSD and low bit converters next. I don't know yet. So if you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.